Good morning everybody and welcome back to the old world where today we're gonna be playing as the Corn will always have blood, yours or theirs. In today's video we're gonna be playing as the demons of corn and to make it all that much more interesting I have also turned on ultimate crisis mode and cranked it up to 200%. Our goals for this video is to become the biggest, baddest bastard to ever walk the earth, get this number as high as possible for a cool thumbnail and to collect a boatload of skulls so we can bribe our way back into hell. Our yearning began right here in the deserts of this place. Our hero of the day was Scarbrand aka the exiled one aka the wrathful reaper aka the drinker of blood aka Mr. Buns. To help him achieve his ultimate goals we have a bunch of guys with tuning forks on their heads, some demons from hell, several very good boys and Dave. The meat magician. Oh, that is disgusting and not something I wanted in my head, for fuck's sake. From here, we had between 80 and 100 turns to prepare for the end of the world and hopefully not to die before it happened. Or I guess this would be a really short video. In the distance were these orcs. Since we were playing as the demons of corn, we chose to employ the very elaborate tactic of charging straight towards their lines with a complete disregard for our own personal safety. Fuck it, I'm just gonna send it, let's go! <laughs> Having won our first victory, we celebrated by eating the survivors and adding their skulls to the pile. We were off to a very good start, but we still had a long way to go if we wanted to go back home. So we sacrificed this village in a uh... Uh, a ritual of alternative religious origins and summon an army of demons to do our bidding because as everybody knows everything is better with the boys. Like all factions in this game, we have a few special mechanics. One of them is that when we raise a settlement we can occupy or loot it like everyone else, or we can raise it for either a cool 1000 skulls for the skull pile, or spawn a small temporary army of demons. Which we did. With our new army in tow, we set our eyes on the next town over on the Malagord Dark Omen. That is a flying goat man. I hate it. Being beastmen, they do worship the chaos gods, one of which is Korn, who we also worship, and surely that would make us friends, right? Nope, not even close. Because Korn, the blood god, is basically a raging alcoholic, and he doesn't care from where his blood comes from. Only that it does. Unlike the first city we conquered, we didn't burn this one to the ground. Because the second mechanic of corn is that any ruins inside one of your provinces have a 1% chance at the start of every turn to be colonized. For free. With two cities now under our control and four more potentials on the way, we have a couple more fights with the orcs and by turn 10, they were so desperate not to be wiped off the map that they offered us 3000 gold in exchange for a peace agreement. Now we were making a very healthy fort for gold at turn at this point, but I decided to be a good neighbor and accept it. Yeah, yeah, sure we can have peace. For one turn. <laughs> Taking someone's money for peace and then declaring war on them the very next turn, while pretty funny, probably won't be described as a very shrewd political maneuver. Which meant that our reliability went from this to this, causing Wurzag, the great green prophet and reigning local dance dance revolution champion to immediately declare war on us. So we finished off the top knots and went over there and showed them our moves. Holy shit. Next we had to deal with a very irritating fact. The French. And unfortunately they, uh, they weren't alone. The local vampires had also decided to take this opportunity to stab us in the back. Which is arguably a worse crime than being the French. So we enacted another ritual of alternative religious origins, summoned an army of demons to hold the French at bay while we personally took the vampires to the bank. The blood bank. With our northern borders safe, we turned south to deal with the French. Unfortunately for them, Scarbrand was now level 25, which meant that he could do this, and this, and this. But it still wasn't enough. I wanted more. 
So to make him even stronger, we decided to go on a quest to find his legendary axes Slaughter and Carnage. Having beaten the French so soundly in our last fight, I sent our fearless leader straight at the enemy force which uh, might have been a terrible mistake. We do eventually manage to beat them, but not before getting a beating ourselves. Which meant that when Big Shungus appears, oh, that is one big boy, <laughs> we probably shouldn't have just charged our lord straight at him. You know what? I think we can take him. We could definitely not take him. As soon as we got close enough, he puked on us until we literally left this realm of existence behind. Thankfully, we still won the battle, but our ego had taken a bit of a bruising. We still won, but at what terrible cost. With our fearless leader taking a lengthy bleach soak, the French pushed over this river in force, forcing us to make a uh, tactical withdrawal. Uh, I think we're gonna do what we in the biz like to call a uh, tactical withdrawal. Thankfully, we didn't have to tactically withdraw for very long. When Scarbrand returned, armed with his brand new axes, we went on the offensive. Having pushed them all the way back into their lands, they concentrated all of their forces here in an attempt to halt our relentless advance. Normally, having to fight over 5,000 soldiers would be a pretty scary thing to do. Facing 5,000 Frenchmen trapped inside the city walls without room to maneuver, however, was definitely not. Having completely decimated their forces, there was nothing that could stop us from wiping them out once and for all. Nothing whatsoever would stand in my way. There was no way that I was going to let them live and continue to be a menace on this world. Nothing at- Oh shit, we gotta go! Someone had just picked up the Sword of Cain. As the name suggests, the Sword of Cain is a sword. But unlike most other swords, this one gives you about 500 damage and a vortex spell that goes y -y 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 and kills everyone that it touches. It might also make everyone hate you and steal your soul, but that's no biggie. <laughs> so with our new quest at hand, we abandoned our campaign against the French and we went on a boat trip to the big donut of the sea. And since we didn't want half of our army to die of scurvy on the way over there, we took a slight detour past fancy Spain where we might have punched Orion in the face. Fuck you Orion, I hate you. <laughs> Having arrived at the Ocean Bagel, the sword had been claimed by Morathi, the spooky dark elf mommy. Armed with the sword, she attempted to go toe to toe with the hero of our story, which was a rather terrible fucking idea. I mean, she gave it a try, you gotta respect that, but that was a very bad idea. <laughs> With a sword in hand, we teleported home through the power of belief. Damn, called some badass. Pausing this story for a moment, we have to go back a few turns. Having sacked the French capital on turn 53 for 20,000 gold, we had put that money to good use recruiting a brand new army. An army led by the one, the only, the Grog. With this new army, Grog had spent the last few turns beating the shit out of the pharaohs. He had been doing this because they had a gall to try and press us for money. Now this is completely irrelevant to the overall story, but I desperately wanted you to know that there is a champion of corn out there going by the name of Grog. Grog the Destroyer. <laughs> anyway, having made it back in record time, we made a very worrying discovery. The Golden Order, who is supposed to be over here, had been conquering a lot of stuff over here. Seeing that this is a blatant attack on our sovereignty, we, uh, we had no other choice but to violently defend our homes. And no, I was totally not doing this just because I wanted to try out our new fancy sword. We destroyed his armies, we looted and burned his cities, we... Oh. Oh no. It was turn 84 and the apocalypse had just begun. Around the globe, the dwarves, skaven, undead, wood elves, orcs, and a black pyramid spawned in massive amounts of armies and declared war on the world. And we. We were not ready. In the north, Scarbrand, the scourge of dwarf kind, did his best to hold off the hordes of dwarves coming down from the mountains. Thankfully, he was max level at this point, and since we had pumped every single skill point we had gotten our grubby hands on into making him into an unstoppable killing machine, he was now an unstoppable killing machine. He killed dwarves by the thousands. Even the High King himself fell 
before our might. But unfortunately that just wasn't enough. For each dwarf he killed, three more took its place. In the south, Grog, who had now ascended into a demon prince, did his best damming up the legions of undead that had come flooding out of the Black Pyramid. But step by step, he was forced back. On turn 92, they had pushed us back to our capital. Grog sallied out to buy us some time, winning us a long victory, but unfortunately he had left the capital undefended, so it was plundered the very next turn. And unfortunately, during his pursuit, Grog was ambushed and killed by a horde of dwarves from the Iron Brows expedition. Our capital was raised the very next turn. And with that, our empire was crumbling and everything seemed lost. I saw no way to victory and I even contemplated teleporting out to one of our cults in the north. But before I did that, I decided to call it a day. Having lost so goddamn hard, I didn't know if I would continue. I didn't even know if I could piece together a video from this hot mess. And the next morning, I returned having had an epiphany. I hadn't been sent here to build a grand empire for myself. I had been sent here to destroy them. I had found my way back and suddenly I knew what I had to do. We had to save the world in order to destroy it. But to do that, we were going to need a base, somewhere we could organize our one-man crusade. Oh look, there it is. Having made sure that it was unoccupied, we started rebuilding our force. As most of you probably already know, to build something that will stand the test of time, you need a stable foundation. Which is why we traveled south. Having rebuilt our former capital, we entered into the lands of the Iron Browse expedition. These were the dwarves who had raised our capital a few turns earlier. So I thought that it was only fitting that we returned the favor. And to be honest, they, uh, they didn't put up much of a fight and soon we made it back into the dunes. Our next target were the sentinels, the undead guardians unleashed by the great pyramid. They were by far the largest enemy we had faced so far, which meant that there was an awful lot of skulls just waiting to be claimed. It wasn't long until we reached the lands of the French. Now I want to say that they put up a valiant fight, but they really didn't. With the south completely void of life, we made it back into our own lands and began finishing off the dwarven expedition. The iron brow, more like the iron jerk. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when they came. Oh, for fuck's sake. Losing our capital again while annoying wasn't really a big deal. All of our soldiers were here for one thing and one thing only, and that was to tie up the enemy while Scarbrand racked up more and more kills in order to get a cool screenshot for the thumbnail. <laughs> we had destroyed everyone that had wronged us. Scarbrand was the apocalypse to end all apocalypses. But since conquering the whole world would force me to play like 3-400 more turns, I instead decided to find the strongest faction leader, beat him and call it a day. There was just one problem. We didn't know where he was. Having burned our way through Gringor's lands, he was nowhere to be seen. So after having used a console command in an attempt to locate him, we found out that he probably had been killed, which meant that he was no longer the strongest faction in the game. Having had a quick look on the diplomacy screen, it turns out that the Dark Elves were now the strongest. So we popped over there and tried to beat up Malekith. Being level 50 at this point, I thought that Malekith could actually give us a run for our money. Which he didn't. We beat him up without breaking a sweat. God damn it. I thought he actually would give us a run for our money. God damn it, Malekith. We can't end on such a pitiful battle. That would be fucking anticlimactic. God damn it. We needed something big, grand. Something that you would remember for at least five minutes after the video's ending. So we searched the world until we found. This. A huge army of undead was gathered outside this city. Now this was a challenge worthy of us. So we teleported over there and we did what we do best. We sent in our fearless leader for one final epic showdown of the ages. For 23 and a half minutes he was a solitary island of death in a sea of unlife. Until finally, after having killed 2,171 units and dealt over 340,000 damage, 
he was brought down. We had collected 89,000 skulls, beaten several of the endgame crisis factions, beaten up the head of the strongest faction in the game and in my opinion become the biggest, baddest bastard on the planet. And with that I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, if you have any ideas feel free to put them down below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace! Annihilation awaits!